Mark here from Sawfly Concepts. Today I'm going to be showing you um, vaguely how to make taxiway lights. Um, we're not talking about effects, we're talking about just simple scenery objects acting as lights, which is what I use. Um, you can make them in SketchUp or 3ds Max or GMAX, it doesn't really matter which one you use, the principle is all pretty much the same. Um, I like using SketchUp for lights because the alpha mapping on your PNG images is a lot better than it would be, say, if you were to make them by hand. But anyway, that's beside the point. So, <clears throat> what have we got? Well, I'm just going to walk you through the thing. So let's hide and hide. Make group and hide. There we go. This is my light. It's, uh, it's, it's not very tall. It's roughly about the same height as your average knee. Let's look up to there. Have a look at that. Uh, it's about 33 centimeters tall. So about your average length of a piece of A4 paper. So yeah, it's about how, how tall it is, a bit of A4 paper high, which is all well and good. Um, the structure of it is pretty pretty basic, really. It's it's nothing to shout about. Of course, there's uh, the texturing. Get inside it one day, there we are. It's all textured to the point of being good. Nice bit of shading on the texture to give you an idea of contours. This is all one texture. I'll show you that now. In model, it's all one texture. And at the bottom here, it's just completely blank. Anything you're not going to see, you don't need the texture. Simple as that. And we can get rid of that later in Model Converter X. Um, my light texture and the underglow texture. That's everything else I've got in there. So if we go for unhide all, I'll show you what I've done here. First, we're going to hide this and open this group up here. This is just your simple cross plane idea for the illumination of the light bulb itself. Just two planes crossed over in the middle, all textured front and back with the same texture. It's all the same size. Now, this plane is, uh, I think it's about two, cent uh, two meters, something like that. No, it's uh, just under, it's 1.83 meters. And of course, the ground runs. Not exactly halfway through it, but nearly. So that near on two meters of length, or should I say height, you're really not going to see all of it. You're only going to see about you know, a meter and so, yeah, 1.2 meters. All you're really going to see out of that, which is what we're absolutely fine with. And of course, the underglow is just flat on the ground, one single plane textured on the top. So, so let us get that into Model Converter X. If you want this model, by the way, uh, this particular model here, I'll be happy enough to send it to you. Just drop me a line on Facebook or our website, anything you like, and I'll be happy to throw you that model straight over. So open up Blue Edge DAE. I'm going to show you how to do it from scratch. I've already made this into an actual taxiway light, but I will show you from scratch because I'm nice like that. <laughs> So here we have it, it's exactly the same. What we're going to want to do is we're going to want to start playing around with the textures. So let's get rid of the color, we don't need it, we're not going to see it. Textures, let's save them. I save them as DDS, save them as DXT. <laughs> uh, it's taking its time, isn't it? Anyway. <laughs> It, it wasn't taking its time, it was just my computer making the mouse flicker, making me think it's loading. Anyway, export object. I'm going to save it as Blue Edge. Temp save me. Temp to save me. Save it as. I was going to save it as Blue Edge 2 because I've already got one. Yep, there we go. That's exported. So, what we're going to do now is we're just going to bring that back into Model Converter X. So, we are Blue Edge 2. Bring it back into MCX. And now start tweaking the textures. So, let's tweak the pylon first, let's change that to 1, change it to never, and false, giving us that. Let's change the specular color to white, which is 255, all the way across the board. There we go, gives us a nice shiny effect on the light, making it look like it's made out of metal or plastic or something like that, I don't know. Anyway, that's pretty much everything we need to do for that. What we want to do now is we want to start playing around with the lights. Now, 
you will need for this uh, a texture called transparent texture. Uh, it's not a program or anything like that, it's just literally a texture that's completely black with an alpha map completely black. So the texture is literally blank. There's nothing in it. It's just black. So this is going to become the night texture and the main texture name is going to become transparent. So let's go ahead and find that. Go for temp scenery, some texture. Take a look at that, transparent. You'll notice the names all switch around because the material name is now called transparent. For the nighttime texture on that, we want the blue light. So I've already copied and pasted this and made it into an LM. It's exactly the same texture as I just used. We go to the night, so no difference. Now we want to make this show up only at night. So let's get rid of these horrible black boxes. It's all in here. Well, it's not all in here, it's down here as well. But still, we want no shadow. And now we're going to change this to IND SRC Alpha. I'm going to change this one to SRC Color. During the day, this is what you see. During the night, this is what you see. Now you will notice this. It's quite easy to deal with. All we have to do is just turn on the no Z right, which fixes it. No problem at all. Now let's do the same for the underglow. Level 1 false, it's all well and good. Daytime texture. Transparent 2. Be sure to have a secondary transparent texture or even a third um, just in case you need to use them. I always keep two in my textures folders just in case I need to go ahead and grab that. Now once again exactly the same, we've already got this named Blue Underglow LM giving us the nighttime texture we want. And we're going to do exactly the same as last time. Come down to here, we want no shadow, no Z right. And last but not least, we want to change this from uh, invert SRC alpha. And we're going to actually leave it at one because the glow is brighter with source blend of one. That's everything we've got there. I would suggest putting um, this, um, the actual flare itself, at 1. If you change that to 1, then the light's a lot brighter. Um, I suggest using that for things like runway lights. So we're just going to stick with SRC color. Now, last but not least, oops, no, wait, there's one more thing we need to do. For the underglow, we want to bring the Z bias up to 2, sticking it above the grid, and if I click on this, you can see what I mean by above the grid. Now, because uh, the Z right's turned off, let's turn that back on, hang on. Where are we? Let's go back. Yeah, as you can see, it's above the... It's, it's above the grid, which means it's above the ground. Let's turn that back on. Night maps back up. Now for the pylon, we're just going to go ahead and add the night version of that, which is blue pylon LM. There we are. We're all ready to go. So that's how you make a light. Uh, during the day, you sparkly. <laughs> and during the night, it's even more sparkly, which is fantastic. So let's export the object. Now before we do, I would recommend saving textures, just in case you've missed one, the X2 will be able to save. Export, there's Blue Edge 2, save, there we go. Okay, so we're now ready to drag this into Flight Simulator, so let's do that now. Like I said, if you want this model, go ahead, just message me in some way, shape or form, I'll put our Facebook link and things like that in the description below. So if you want the model, just go ahead and ask. Okay, we want library creator. Let us open the library. Taxiway lights. Just going to swap this one out for Blue Edge 2. And save it. There we go. It's all well and good. Let's open up 
our flight sync folder. And just drag our taxi with like BGL into there. I've already got the textures in there, so we don't need to do that. All we have to do is just open up Flight Sim and give it a test. There we are. Change it. All right, let's go to my targeted airport. <laughs> I always pick on this airport. Safe Hampton. Time is using the uh, daytime. That's all well and good. Okay, fly now. Alright, so here we are. We're on the ground at Southampton. Let's uh, just move forward. And we're going to hit slew and go up a few feet. There we are. Okay, now let's open up our instant scenery. Really should update my instant scenery. There's been two new versions released since I got this. Oh, since I got this? No, there's been two new versions released since I last updated. Uh, where are we? Taxiway Lloyds. There it is. Got one in there, which is our blue edge light, which is very, very nice. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to find a place to put these. Where else should it be? I don't know what I'll do. I'll just run them down the center of the runway because why the fuck not? Put them down there. Line of objects. Look at that, 25. It's already set up. Let's go this way. file example 2 cancel we can now close that go for world time and season actually no I think I'll show you it first <laughs> here we are let's creep a little bit closer to these lights yeah, that's what they look like on the ground nice and defined pretty cool uh, if we Switch to here, you can see they're nice and transparent. You can see straight through them, which is brilliant. I love that look. Let's go back to normal view. There we are. Let's come back a bit. Zoom out. It's about there. Okay, now let's change time to night so we can see how they look at night. Uh, for placing lights I would highly recommend something like instant scenery but you can of course do it in ADE and uh, other placement programs. Um, the best way to do it would definitely be to use instant scenery unless you plan on placing them in like unspecific places so like, if, it doesn't, if they don't need to be straight then by all means use ADE unless you're very good at ADE for object placement. Me not so much. And that's how to look at night. You can see the glows on the ground. They light the ground up very, very, very nicely. And of course, as you get further and further away, they of course disappear. But that's nothing to complain about. You don't need to see lights from super long distances. Eagle-eyed viewers will note that um, there is a little bit of a texture problem at the bottom. Let's just zoom in on that there. If you look at the bottom, you can see a sort of no mouse situation. You can see a uh, like a little glow underneath there, but that's nothing to worry about. Like you can obviously change the textures as much as you like. It's going to be your light. But yeah, it looks really nice. Go back a bit. 
ground itself is illuminated. And of course, as you get further and further away, the lights disappear. Kind of. They don't, they don't disappear completely, they just sort of get smaller and smaller and smaller. Because they are objects, they don't bloom out like taxiway lights do or runway lights, they, they just get smaller. Which is about right for lights, they don't, lights in the real world don't bloom out, they don't get brighter as you go away, they get dimmer. Which is something flight sim needs to learn. So yeah, there you go. That is how I make taxiway lights. Um, the same principle applies for center lights, of course, without the pylon. So, if you're going to make a center light, just make the light itself. Don't don't worry about making the pylon or the structure. Just just make the cross polygon light and the ground glow, and use the same principle. And there you have it. There's your center light. Um, for things like runway lights, because they tend to be brighter, what I tend to do is I tend to use um, effects for runway lights. I I don't. I don't tend to play around with runway lights, I just sort of leave them as they are. I use a light effect, a, B, a, a BGL light effect, so you can see it from a good distance. Approach lights, I still use library objects for them. They just look nicer. So yeah, anyway, I hope you... Like, I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Um, like, of course, it took a bit of planning to make there. And, as I said, if you would like to have that SketchUp model, just drop me a line somehow, and I will happily send it your way. Um, I'll be posting this on FS Developer, so if you watched it on there and want to know anything else, um, just by all means comment, and I'll try and get back to you as quick as I can with that. Well, yep, like I said, I hope you really enjoyed this tutorial. I quite enjoyed making it. It took a bit of planning, but we got there in the end. Thanks for sitting through my boring-ass voice. Uh, well, I hope to uh, make another one at some point. Anyway, my name's Mark from Sawfly Content. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will catch you a lot later. Well, not not a lot later. I'll just see you later. Yeah, later sounds good. I like making lights. <laughs>